Now we're going to look at the distance and midpoint formulas. All right, so to find our distance formula, kind of think of a graph. You have your x and you have your y. Let's see, you have a point we'll call x1, y1. And you have another point, we'll put it up here. We'll call that x2, y2. Okay. So we look here, if we draw our imaginary line straight down, we know on our x-axis, this is our x1. And on our x-axis here, this would be our x2. So if we drew another kind of imaginary line to cross the y-axis, so let me make that a little bit taller. Okay. We know this would have to be our y1, and this would have to be our y2. So if we connect it to find the distance between those two, if you look here, we have a right angle, okay? Which means if we know our x and our y, or you can say a, b, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we can use the Pythagorean theorem, okay? So we have our distance here. Then we have our x value, and we know that our x value is just x2 minus x1. And we have our y value, which from here to here is just our y2 minus y1. Okay. So if we use our Pythagorean theorem, which says that x squared plus y squared equals z squared. Or you can use a, b, and c, whichever one. Okay, so our x, remember, that's just x2 minus x1. So that's x2 minus x1 squared plus our y, remember, that's just y2 minus y1 y2 minus y1 squared equals z squared, and our z is just the distance, so we'll call that d squared. Uh -oh. Make that a little neater of a 2. There we go. So if we square root both sides, we end up with our distance equaling the square root. Of course, it has to be positive since you won't have a negative distance x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And this is your distance formula. Right, so let's say for example, I want to find the distance between
between the point. Uh -oh. Say negative 2, 3, and 4, negative 5. So all we have to do is pick either one as our x1, y1, and x2, y2. doesn't matter which is which, because once you square it, as soon as it's negative, it'll become positive, so you don't have to worry. So negative 2, 3, and 4, negative 5. We can make this our x1, and this our y1. We can make this our x2. And that one, our y2. And just plug it into our formula. So distance is going to equal the square root x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Which means it equals the square root x2 minus x1 is 4 minus negative 2. squared plus y2 minus y1 is negative 5 minus 3 squared. Okay. So 4 minus negative 2 is 6. So you have the square root of 6 squared plus negative 5 and negative 3 is negative 8. So negative 8 squared which is the square root of 36 plus 8, negative 8 times negative 8, is positive 64, is the square root of 100, which is 10. Okay, so that's the distance between those two points. All right, so any questions on that one? All right, we'll do one more example. Then we'll go to the midpoint formula. So for our next example, let's see if we want to find the distance. Twenty-seven and forty-six, and thirty-three, fifty. Okay. So again, you just pick one to make your x one y one, and the other one is your x two y two. So you make that your x1, and that one your y1, and this one your x2, and this one your y2. All right. Then we just plug it into our formula. So the distance is equal to the square root x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So that's going to equal the square root. x2 minus x1 is 33 minus 27 squared plus y2 minus y1 is 50 minus 46 squared.
Okay, so that's going to equal 33 minus 27 is 6 squared. 50 minus 46 is 4 squared, which is the square root of, oh, might as well put in the old thing, 36. plus 16, which is the square root of 52. Which 52 is equal to, I have to get that a little bit closer. Which is the square root of four times 13 which is 2 square root of 13. Okay, so it won't always end up a nice, neat little number. Sometimes it'll end up kind of crazy. All right, so any questions on that one? All right, leave that up for a few more seconds. So now we'll start on the midpoint formula. Okay, so our midpoint formula, using the same x1 and x2, is just x1 plus x2 divided by 2, and your y1 plus y2 divided by 2. So it's just the average length of both your x and y. Add them together, cut in half, right in the middle. So this would be your x midpoint, and this would be the y of your midpoint. Okay. So you do the exact same thing that you did with the distance formula as you get your points. You make one at x1, y1, one at x2, y2, then you plug it in. And that gets you the point halfway between your x1, y1, and x2, y2. So this is your x1, y1. And this is your x2, y2. That's your midpoint. So let's say, for example, find the midpoint of the line segment with endpoints. negative 2, 5, and 4, negative 2. Okay, so just like before, we have a negative 2, 5, and 4, negative 2. Make one our x1, y1. And the other are x2, y2. Then we plug them into our formula. Goes to our midpoint. Remember that's x1 plus x2 divided by 2. And y1 plus y2 divided by 2. Which is equal to x1 plus x2 is negative 2 plus 4 divided by 2, 
and y1 plus y2 is 5 plus negative 2 divided by 2. Okay, so that's equal to negative 2 plus 4 is positive 2 over 2. And 5 plus negative 2 is 3 over 2. So your midpoint would be 1 and 3 halves. So any questions on that one? Okay. So now we're going to cover the graph of a circle. Okay, so the technical definition of a circle is the set of all points. on a plane uh -oh, that are a fixed distance and that distance we'll call that R, our radius, from the center. Now, the general equation of a circle is x squared plus y squared plus dx plus ey plus f equals 0, where d, e, and f are just constants. Now the standard form of a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals your radius squared. Now your h and k represent your center. And the r is your radius. So if you were to just draw it quick, use your imagination and pretend that's a perfectly drawn circle. The distance from your center, that's your center there, and your radius would be there. Okay. Now there are actually steps to convert from a general equation to a standard equation. And we should be able to fit them all here. Steps to convert a general equation to a standard form. Now, it's not really an equation. I guess you can call it an equation, but form is probably better fitting. to a standard form. Okay. So your first step 
you're going to bring your x terms and your y terms next to each other. and factor out any greatest common factors. If necessary. Okay. Now your second step is you're going to find you're going to complete the square for the x terms and the y terms. Now, anything without an x or a y next to it goes to the other side of the equal sign. Okay. So now you're going to convert your perfect square trinomials into the, I guess you can call it the standard form. square trinomials. And you can actually use this form to find your center and your radius. Your center and radius, if necessary. Okay, so let's say, for example, so you want to find the center and radius for, let's say, for problem A, x squared plus y squared equals 64. For problem B, say x plus 4 squared plus y squared equals 1. And let's say for problem C, x minus 1 squared plus y plus 4 squared equals 9. Actually, instead of 9, let's make that 19. Now remember, for all of them, you want to have it in the form x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, because our hk is our center, and r is our radius. Okay. So we want to convert all of those to look like 
this form. Okay. So for problem A, if you have x squared plus y squared equals 64, we can just make that x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared. And instead of 64, we can make that 8 squared. Where this is your h, this is your k, and this is your r. Okay, so your center, which is your hk, is 0, 0. Your radius is equal to 8. So all you have to do is convert it to the form that you're looking for. Okay. For problem B, you have x plus 4 squared, uh-oh, don't need that, plus y squared equals 1. Now, when we have a plus sign, you can't really have a plus sign. You have to have a minus sign for both of those. So you can just make this x minus negative 4 squared. Plus, and that y squared, you can just make it y minus 0 squared again. And instead of 1, you can make it 1 squared. Where this is your h. This is your k, and that's your radius. Okay, so you have your center, which is hk, so that would be negative 4, 0. And you have your radius, which is equal to 1. Okay, so you want to make sure it's x minus h and y minus k. If you left it as your center is hk here, if you put it as positive 4, it would have been incorrect. All right. So any questions on that so far? Oh, okay. All right, so for c, it should go ahead and bring that up. You have x minus 1 squared plus y plus 4 squared equals 19. Kind of clean that up a little bit. Okay, So here you have your x minus k, I mean x minus h rather. So yeah, x minus 1 squared, so that one doesn't change. Now you want that as y minus k, so that's plus y minus negative 4 squared. And here you have 19, so you can't really put 19 as something squared. So instead, and I'll make a little side note here, 19, you can rewrite that as the square root of 19 squared. Because remember, the exponent and the square root will cancel out and you'll end up right back with 19. So that's the square root of 19 squared. Okay, so this is your h, this is your k, and that's your radius. Okay, so your center, which is hk, is going to be 1, negative 4, and your radius will equal square root of 19. 